In this video, we will discuss the topic of testicular neoplasms. Firstly, we will have a brief and general overview about testicular neoplasms and then we will discuss each of the important testicular cancers in details. So let's start with a general overview. The first point to understand is that testicular neoplasms predominantly occur in younger age population. The peak incidence is at about 15 to 35 years of age. And even though there are some testicular tumors that occur at very young age or very old age, but most of the testicular tumors develop in the age group ranging from 15 to 35 years. Now the testicular tumors are broadly classified into two types. One is germ cell tumors and the second is sex cord stromal tumors. Germ cell tumors and sex cord stromal tumors. The germ cell tumors originate from the series of cells that have to be eventually transformed into sperms. You know such cells are called germ cells. While sex cord stromal tumors arise from Sertoli cells and Leydig cells. The function of these cells is to provide support to the germ cells or to secrete male androgenic hormone that is testosterone. Now the germ cell tumors that originate from the germ cells are relatively much more common than the sex cord stromal tumors. In fact, more than 95% of the testicular tumors are germ cell tumors. And unfortunately, other than being more common, almost all of the germ cell tumors are malignant in nature. In contrast, the sex cord stromal tumors that originate from Sertoli cells or Leydig cells are relatively much less common and even if they develop, they are usually benign. Now, as almost all testicular tumors are germ cell tumors, so we will have discussion only about them. Now, the germ cell tumors can themselves be categorized into two categories that are seminomas or seminomatous tumors and non seminomatous tumors. We will discuss these in detail, but before coming to the details, one very important point to learn and memorize is the cytogenic abnormalities that are commonly found in testicular neoplasms. The cytogenic abnormality that is present in germ cell tumors is presence of extra copies of short arm of chromosome 12 or 12p that we call as isochromosomes of short arm of chromosome number 12. So, isochrome, isochromosome of chromosome number 12 is found in many testicular neoplasms. This is the cytogenic abnormality that you need to remember. Now we will discuss the pathology of each of testicular cancers. The first one of these is seminomatous tumors or seminomas. Seminomas are the most common type of testicular tumors and in fact all other categories of testicular tumors combined are classified as non-seminomatous tumors. Now for morphological features of seminomatous tumors, the keywords to focus are lobules with clear tumor cells and other cells. Lobules with clear tumor cells and other cells. The first keyword is lobules. So you will see that the tumor mass is composed of multiple lobules separated by fibrous collagenous septa. The second keyword is clear tumor cells. So you will see tumor cells in lobules are large in size. They have a clear cytoplasm that does not stain eosinophilic and they have prominent and conspicuous nuclei and nucleoli. So overall the cells are large in size with clear cytoplasm and conspicuous nuclei and nucleoli. Now the third keyword is other cells and the mnemonic to remember these other cells is LGS. LGS. L stands for lymphocytes. G stands for granulomas, so you will see cells of granulomatous inflammation and S stands for syncytiotrophoblasts. Now these syncytiotrophoblasts are not present in all cases of testicular seminomas. They are present only in 15% of the cases. So these other cells include lymphocytes, granulomas and syncytiotrophoblasts in 15% of the cases. So overall you can see in this diagram that the tumor mass is composed of multiple lobules separated by thick fibrous collagenous septa you can see the clear tumor cells that are large in size, they have clear cytoplasm and they have prominent nuclei and nucleoli. And thirdly, out of other cells that we discussed, lymphocytes, granulomas and syncytiotrophoblasts, you can see these blue color dots that represent lymphocytes. The granulomas and syncytiotrophoblasts are not visible in this diagram, but they can be present. Now the tumor marker for testicular seminomas is HCG or human chorionic gonadotrophin but it is present only in 15% of the cases of testicular seminomas. What is the reason? The reason is that this hormone human chorionic gonadotrophin is secreted by syncytiotrophoblasts but as syncytiotrophoblasts are present in only 15% of the cases of testicular seminomas so resultantly this tumor marker is only present in 15% of the cases in rest of the cases you cannot find any tumor marker in testicular seminomas so i hope that this point is clear 
Now we will discuss the pathology of spermatocytic tumors. Previously, spermatocytic tumors were known as spermatocytic seminomas. But now they are not called spermatocytic seminomas because their clinical behavior is not like that of seminomas. Instead, their clinical behavior is similar to non-seminomatous tumors. So instead of calling them spermatocytic seminomas, we call them spermatocytic tumors. Now the first important point about spermatocytic tumors is that unlike other testicular tumors that occur at a young age, these spermatocytic tumors occur at a relatively old age of 50 to 60 years. So in this way they are an exception. Now as far as the morphology of spermatocytic tumors is concerned, the keyword is spermatocytes. These spermatocytes are visible as cells of variable sizes that are usually polygonal and unlike classical seminomas, spermatocytic tumors contain lone lymphocytes or syncytiotrophoblasts. We studied in classical seminomas that they may contain lymphocytes, granulomas or syncytiotrophoblasts. But in spermatocytic tumors that were previously called spermatocytic seminomas, the difference is that they do not contain lymphocytes or syncytiotrophoblasts. So overall you see cells of variable sizes and you don't see any lymphocytes or syncytiotrophoblasts. The second point to learn about spermatocytic tumors is that they do not have any tumor marker. Now let's come to the discussion of embryonal carcinomas. The first important point is that the embryonal carcinomas occur in age group of 20 to 30 years. You know that we studied in testicular tumors overview that these tumors commonly occur at the age group of 15 to 45. So embryonal carcinomas also arise in the early spectrum of this age that is 20 to 30 years. Now for morphological features, the keywords to remember for embryonal carcinoma are embryo. You know that embryo means undifferentiated or developing. So if you keep these points undifferentiated or developing in mind, then you will be able to easily recall the morphological features of embryonal carcinoma. So we will discuss the features of embryonal carcinoma under two headings. First is cellular appearance which means that how do the cells appear. And the second is cellular arrangement which means that how the tumor cells are arranged. So the first point is cellular appearance. As the cells in embryonal carcinoma are undifferentiated and have not been differentiated into one particular type, so you will be so you will see cells that will be variable in size and shape. You know that such cells are called pleomorphic cells. Secondly, as the cells of embryonal carcinoma are developing, so they need a lot of synthetic machinery in the form of ribosomes or rough endoplasmic reticulum. Resultantly, the presence of rough endoplasmic reticulum and ribosomes will make the cytoplasm of cells as basophilic. Thirdly, as the cells of embryonal carcinoma are cancerous cells with a lot of proliferating potential. So they will have a prominent nucleus and prominent nucleoli. Now, as far as the cellular arrangement is concerned, the tumor cells are arranged in a variety of patterns, such as sheets of cells, glandular structures or irregular finger-like projections called papilla. So overall on microscopic features of embryonal carcinomas, you see pleomorphic cells with basophilic cytoplasm and prominent nucleoli arranged in form of either sheets, glands or papilla. Lastly, the tumor marker in case of embryonal carcinoma is negative, which means that there is no specific substance whose presence in blood gives a clue about embryonal carcinoma. The next type of testicular tumors is yolk sac tumors. The first most important striking point about these tumors is that yolk sac tumors occur in babies who are less than 3 years of age. So they occur in the younger stage group. You can memorize this as that Y stands for yolk sac and Y also stands for younger stage group. So, yolk sac tumors are present in younger than 3 years of children. Now, for morphological features of yolk sac tumors, the keywords to memorize are tumor cells and Schiller dual bodies. Tumor cells and Schiller dual bodies. Now, the first keyword tumor cell means that tumor cells will be low columnar to cuboidal in appearance and they can be arranged in a variety of patterns such as microcyst, reticular pattern, sheets, glands, or papilla. So there can be a variety of patterns. The second important morphological feature that is present in some of the yolk sac tumors is Schiller dual bodies. Schiller dual bodies are structures resembling the primitive glomeruli. So let's see in a diagram that how do these structures appear and how do they resemble developing glomeruli. You can see that this is a Schiller dual body. It is lined by low cuboidal or columnar cells that are tumor cells and inside them is a vascular core. Now you know that glomeruli also have a central glomerular capillaries. So just like capillaries of glomeruli, these Schiller dual bodies have vascular cores. Secondly, you know that glomerular capillaries are surrounded by epithelial podocytes. So in a similar way, these Schiller dual bodies are lined by epithelial tumor cells. So this way, they resemble the developing glomeruli. Another important point regarding yolk sac tumors is that the tumor cells can be positive for some immunohistochemical stains. 
the cells of yolk sac tumor are rich in alpha fetoprotein and alpha 1 antitrypsin so these two chemicals can be identified by immunohistochemical stains so overall on microscopic picture of yolk sac tumors you see locuboidal to columnar cells that form microcysts reticulum sheets glands and papilla and most of the tumors contain chiller dual bodies these are the structures resembling primitive glomeruli these bodies are lined by low columnar or cuboidal epithelial cells that are tumor cells and inside them are vascular cores and these tumors can also be stained immunohistochemically for alpha fetoprotein and alpha 1 antitrypsin tumor marker in case of yolk sac tumors is alpha fetoprotein you know that we can detect alpha fetoprotein by immunohistochemical staining of the tumor cells but additionally we can also detect this alpha fetoprotein in blood by biochemical assays so alpha fetoprotein acts as a tumor marker for yolk sac tumors now the next testicular tumor is choriocarcinoma the first point is that choriocarcinoma also develops in typical age group of testicular tumors that is almost 20 to 30 years for microscopic features of choriocarcinoma the keywords to focus is chorion you know that chorion is the outermost membrane of embryo that contributes to the development of placenta and you also know that the cells of placenta are called trophoblasts so the classical feature of choriocarcinoma is the presence of placental trophoblasts. Now there are two types of trophoblasts, cytotrophoblasts and syncytiotrophoblasts. So choriocarcinoma comprises of sheets of cytotrophoblasts that are surrounded by syncytiotrophoblasts that have a single nucleus. So you can see here in this diagram there is a sheet of cytotrophoblast. These are small cuboidal cells and they have a single nucleus. Surrounding these cytotrophoblasts are syncytiotrophoblasts that are large cells with multiple nuclei. So you can see here in this diagram that these are syncytiotrophoblasts. They are large cells intensely eosinophilic with multiple nuclei. So overall you see a sheets of cytotrophoblasts surrounded by syncytiotrophoblasts. Now you know that in pregnancy the cells of placenta secrete a hormone human chorionic gonadotrophin that act as a marker of pregnancy. But in these testicular tumors that are choriocarcinoma, as there is presence of placental trophoblast, so since cytotrophoblasts secrete hormone HCG or human chorionic gonadotrophin that occur as a tumor marker. So HCG can be present as a tumor marker in choriocarcinoma. And here I would like to remind you that in testicular seminomas in 15% of cases, this similar hormone human chorionic gonadotrophin can be present. But in choriocarcinoma it is present in almost all of the cases so the tumor marker of choriocarcinoma is hcg or human chorionic gonadotrophin now the next type of testicular tumors are testicular teratomas and the first important point is that testicular teratomas can occur in people of all ages this is unlike all other testicular tumors that commonly occur at a specific age group of 15 to 40 years but testicular teratomas can occur in people of all ages for morphological features, first of all, you need to learn that what the teratoma actually is. So, teratoma is a mass of tumor that arises from all three germ layers, that are ectoderm, endoderm, and mesoderm, and therefore, it has the potential to develop in cells of all types, such as epithelium, endothelium, bone, tissue, cartilage, and tissues like that. So, the keyword to remember for testicular teratomas is cells of multiple lineages. Now, based on this, testicular teratomas can be classified into three types. Mature teratomas, immature teratomas, and teratomas with malignant transformation. Firstly, the mature teratomas are those that contain mature or differentiated cells, such as smooth muscle cells, cartilage, epithelium, etc. Secondly, the immature teratomas are those that contain a mixture of undifferentiated cells. These undifferentiated cells may be mesenchyme or poorly formed cartilage. Thirdly, teratomas with malignant transformation means that the testicular teratomas contain components that undergo malignant change and appear like mature carcinomas of other organs such as squamous cell carcinoma of lung or adenocarcinoma of colon etc. So overall in mature teratomas you see mixture of differentiated cells. In immature teratoma you see mixture of undifferentiated cells such as mesenchyme or poorly formed cartilage. Thirdly in teratomas with malignant transformation you see cancers of other tissues such as squamous cell carcinoma of lung or adenocarcinoma etc. Lastly the tumor marker in cases of pure testicular teratomas is negative which means there is no any substance in blood that can guess about presence of testicular teratomas. Now here is an additional point that I want to mention about teratomas. 
Do you know that we discussed in general overview of testicular neoplasms that almost all the testicular tumors arising from germ cells are malignant. But teratomas can show a small exception to this rule. The point is that the teratomas that arise before the puberty are benign, in contrast to most of the testicular tumors that are malignant. But if the teratomas arise after the period of puberty, then the general rule is followed so that the teratomas are malignant in nature. So overall, the testicular teratomas that occur in pre-pubertal males are benign and the testicular teratomas that occur in post-pubertal males are usually malignant. Now the last category of testicular tumors is mixed tumors. They arise at the age of 15 to 30 years and as the name implies, they are composed of mixture of other type of testicular tumors, such as they may be composed of mixture of yolk sac tumors and choriocarcinoma. Now let's review the clinical features of testicular neoplasms. So basically, testicular neoplasms present as painless masses. This feature of being painless differentiate testicular neoplasms from inflammatory lesions of testis that commonly present as painful masses. But in contrast, testicular neoplasms are painless masses. Now based on clinical behavior, testicular neoplasms can be classified into seminomatous tumors and non-seminomatous tumor. You know that we studied seminomas as one separate histopathological entity. But these non-seminomatous tumors are not a single histopathological entity, rather all other tumors that are not seminomas are classified together as non-seminomas. The reason is that all other tumors that are not seminomas have a similar clinical behavior. So we classify them together as non-seminomatous tumors. Now generally seminomas are considered good tumors prognostically because they metastasize late in the course of disease. And even if they show metastasis, they usually metastasize to a lymphatic root. That is, they can metastasize to iliac and paraaortic lymph nodes, but they do not metastasize to far off organs. In contrast, non seminomatous tumors are bad tumors prognostically because they tend to metastasize early in the course of disease. And they metastasize both by lymphatic root and hematogenous root. By hematogenous root, I mean that they invade the blood vessels and can metastasize to far off organs, such as liver and lungs. So, non seminomatous tumors are bad tumors because they show metastasis by lymphatics and hematogenous root. Now as testicular seminomas are good tumors prognostically and they do not metastasize early in the course, so they can simply be eradicated by radiotherapy. In contrast, the non-seminomatous tumors that have a tendency to metastasize to far off organs require aggressive chemotherapy to be eradicated. And here one additional point is that even in non-seminomatous tumors, the testicular tumor that has worst prognosis is choriocarcinoma. So choriocarcinoma has the worst prognosis. Now in this review of clinical features of testicular neoplasms, we studied that testicular seminomas metastasize late in the course of disease and even if they metastasize, they metastasize by lymphatic route. And they can be simply treated by radiotherapy. In contrast, non-seminomatous tumors metastasize early in the course of disease. They can metastasize both by lymphatics and blood vessels into liver and lungs and they require aggressive chemotherapy to treat. Now in cases of testicular tumors, the tumor markers have a specific diagnostic role. We studied in the previous sections of discussion of each testicular tumors is that human chorionic gonadotrophin is present as a tumor marker in choriocarcinoma and in 15% of the cases of testicular seminomas. Because human chorionic gonadotrophin was secreted by syncytiotrophoblasts, these syncytiotrophoblasts are present in almost all cases of choriocarcinoma and only in the 15% cases of testicular seminomas. Secondly, alpha fetoprotein is a tumor marker for yolk sac tumors. Now regarding the management of testicular tumors, there is only one point that you need to remember. That if a patient presents with testicular tumor mass, you don't do biopsy to diagnose it on microscope because if you do biopsy, there is a chance of tumor spillage into the scrotum and in this way, tumor can spread. So the management of testicular tumors is radical orchiectomy, which means that if a patient presents with painless testicular mass and you suspect testicular cancer, then instead of doing biopsy, you directly remove that testicular tumor. This concludes the discussion on pathology of testicular tumors.